Let's bring in Greg McBride, Chief Financial Analyst at Bankrate.com. Greg, I think the last time this conversation was relevant, you and I were probably in our 20s. But at <laughs> any rate, and that's a long time ago for me, less so for you. Uh, in, investors, savers who want to find a good place for cash, what's the best place for it right now? I'm looking at a yield of 5.3% on a six-month T-bill. Why not just go on Treasury Direct and put some cash in there? The best yields in 15 years, Tyler, not that anybody's count. Uh, but yes, that, you know, yields over 5% on those short-term treasuries. If you can live without the money for six months, you know that's certainly very attractive, I think, for the majority of individual investors and uh, households that are short on emergency savings. Keeping that money liquid is better. After all, the Fed is still active. Even though those shorter-term securities have minimal interest rate risk, you don't want to find yourself in the position of having to liquidate it prior to maturity. You'd rather just have that couple of clicks away in an online savings. And you find that, that combination of yield and liquidity in money market funds, for example. Uh, I guess in some savings accounts you could get that. But it's basically money market funds and short-term bond funds. Am I, am I correct, Greg? Savings accounts, money market funds, great for the brokerage account. If you've got money you're putting into the market over time or you want to be able to move quickly if the market uh, has a bad day, uh, you know, the money fund is great for that. Those short-term bond funds, that, you know, I think that's a little bit more of an asset allocation decision. But again, with short-term treasury yields over 5%, there's some pretty attractive yields there in those short-term treasury funds. I don't know that you're necessarily being compensated for the risk with, with very narrow corporate bond spread. So I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to stretch for yield in an environment like that. Steve, let me let me turn to you, and I'm looking, we're looking here, if we could take that picture of the uh, wall over there with the six-month bill yielding 5.3, the one-year bill yielding 5.25. Is that a reflection of the inverted yield curve, one, Steve, or number two, is it a reflection of edginess about uh, what might happen if the debt ceiling uh, go, is is breached. In other words, we do we get into a situation where we're not paying our bills, and that could happen within six months, not a year's time. I think all of that is a yes, uh, Tyler. I don't mm. know that you gave me the option of all of the above, but but I think all of that is built into rates. Uh, the the uh, increasing, by the way, outlook for the Fed funds rate. I did want to get a a current quote here. I've got a. Uh, yeah, 569, which is a new high for the, uh, the funds rate for the, uh, the uh, uh, October contract, is out there. But, Tyler, I want to make a, a, an argument that would cause some viewers at home to throw papers at their television here okay. for the 10-year, okay? Because it's like, why would you do a 10-year at 5% or at 4% when you can go into these great uh, 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 accounts here that Greg is talking about and get 4% and all that liquidity? Well, the argument, and I'm not necessarily advocating this, I'm just telling what the argument is.